If you've played video games for a decent portion of your life, chances are you've likely heard of a director named Hideo Kojima, the creator of the enormously successful Metal Gear Solid series. However, if you're a fan of film and haven't followed games over the last decade or two, I'm willing to bet you've already been a fan of a huge amount of the cinematic gold that helped shape Kojima's legacy as a game director, and the medium of games as a whole. As of last year, the aforementioned series has sold 53.8 million copies and had overwhelmingly positive reception commercially and critically. Kojima has in the past playfully introduced himself, saying that he considered himself to be 70% made of movies, and it's my opinion that the same could be said of every game he's directed to date. The series has built a reputation for elevating the medium from humble 8-bit beginnings to film-like experiences, and for tackling complex philosophical themes in the same way screenwriters and auteur directors have done over the last century of motion picture. Kojima's next project, Death Stranding, is shaping up to be one of the most enigmatic and anticipated releases in modern entertainment, with well respected film actors such as Norman Reedus and Mads Mikkelsen attached to the project. With Kojima are now rubbing shoulders with directors like Guillermo del Toro and Edgar Wright, and modern motion capture technology reaching incredible levels of realism, it feels like the world of games and film have never been quite so neck and neck, and so close to making one big beautiful cinematic baby together. But how did games reach this point? How did a young movie-loving game designer break onto the scene with this, and go on to be a leading figure in the industry that by 2013 would have the largest international media launch of all time? How did this become this? The answer? By ripping off movies. Just a little bit. Kojima's journey to making games fit for Hollywood began with the creation of Metal Gear, a 1987 stealth action title released by Japanese company Konami. Kojima cites 1963's The Great Escape as the main inspiration for the game, saying he wanted it to play like the movie, with the main character avoiding enemies and escaping without a fight. The limited visuals you see in Metal Gear don't quite capture a so-called cinematic experience by today's standards. However, the simple action-packed plot and military designs were immediately familiar to anyone who knew their action flicks. Perhaps the most transparent bawling from the world of film being the box art, an exact recreation of this image from the 1984 classic The Terminator. Technical progress in game development evolved like a home console space race, allowing Kojima and Co. to follow up on Metal Gear's success in 1990 with a sequel that improved on every appealing facet of the original. Metal Gear 2, Solid Snake, expanded in gameplay, music and plot including themes like the nature of war and the idea of nuclear power and weaponry. Again, it's pretty clear that the Kojima & Co. the goal was to create something that could not so much copycat, but more stand alongside movies in terms of high quality drama. Seeing the game's character designs, it doesn't take a stretch to see both what Kojima was watching at the time and what he wanted to try and achieve in terms of feeling like a movie. <laughs> With Kojima established as an ambitious and creative designer in Konami, the release of 1994's graphic adventure Police Knots once again pushed the envelope in terms of presentation of games as pieces of modern cinema. In a 1996 interview, Kojima said, I feel that what the game industry lacks right now is the quality of lighting, acting and direction you find in movies. Then there's the depth of the story, the accurately depicted relationships and the final polish. I think it's incredibly difficult to make a game that matches the production quality of a movie. Police Knots uses cinematic camera work and cuts, and it was my awareness of movies that caused me to use those techniques. Once again, there's a strong feeling of the visual language of films like Blade Runner and 2001 A Space Odyssey being baked into the game world, by someone who clearly had a vision for games to evolve into something truly great. In a few short years, games have come closer than ever before to matching the aesthetics of movies, and the ability to tell stories in a more high-budget way audiences would relate to had started to give rise to more complex characterization. The production quality Kojima spoke about could only continue to improve. So what came next? Cut to 1998, when Konami and Kojima set the bar for what a 3D action game could be with the release of Metal Gear Solid. MGS1 has been retrospectively hailed as the first modern video game, and the leap to 3D made it possible to further realise the cinematic ideology Kojima had been building for a decade. With a serious Hollywood glow up from his Mel Gibson phase, Snake's masterful design by series staple artist Yoji Shinkawa now rendered him closer than ever to the action hero he was meant to be, with the artist citing Jean-Claude Van Damme and Christopher Walken as the main physical inspiration. Kojima could really start to do justice to the iconography and aesthetics from the movies that inspired him to make games in the first place. Designed for series baddie Revolver Ocelot was lovingly pulled straight out of a spaghetti western, while the true names of series protagonist Snake and his sidekick Otacon are revealed to be David and Hal, a direct homage to Kojima's favourite film. This scene where the heroine of the game is wounded by a sniper is directly inspired by this scene from Full Metal Jacket. Metal Gear Solid was a love letter to the legacy of 20th century cinema, while still managing to be one of the most original and exciting experiences ever crammed onto a compact disc. By this time, Metal Gear wasn't the only game leaping off the shoulders of the world of film and into the PS1. Games like Resident Evil 2 were building on the classic zombie movie genre, and proving that games couldn't just be as exciting as the big screen, but also equally as horrifying. In more ways than one. 
Jill, this house is dangerous. There are terrible demons. Ouch! Metal Gear Solid sold 6 million copies, and reviewers at the time were starting to drop the B-bomb on it, comparing it to playing a big budget action blockbuster only better. Expectations were high for a sequel, but what could the next game achieve? With the release of Metal Gear Solid 2 in 2001, technical fidelity gave games more credibility than ever in tackling themes like the perception of reality and examining the motivations of every character in a given story. Writing a game in such a way as to make the player question themselves and everything they saw so far added a layer of weight to the series as a whole. The end of MGS2's story shocked players with the idea that most of the game was a simulated plan run by artificial intelligence, a complex idea that had been portrayed two years prior in The Matrix, but I honestly would argue it was explored to greater and more powerful effect in the game. Describing a vision for the game as a Hollywood blockbuster game, British film composer Harry Gregson Williams was hired to create the score, and smaller references such as Snake's alias Pliskin call back to the original inspiration for the character from John Carpenter's Escape from New York. Following up MGS2 in 2004 came MGS3 Snake Eater, an espionage spy thriller set against the Cold War. As you'd probably guess by now, the game eventually gives way to being a critical look at the nationalism and ideologies of post-World War II world, the idea of heroism and the effect of conflict and soldiers trapped within the greater political agendas, and it was the foundation built by following in film's footsteps that gave the aesthetics, editing, acting and structure to do so. And the game constantly reminds us of it. The player makes radio calls to HQ that turn into full-blown reviews of James Bond, Godzilla, Dracula, The Fly, Doctor Strangelove and so many more, and Kojima has a self-awareness to not just recognise but call attention to these forefathers of his games. It's as if every scene in the game has some sort of hidden thank you to classic cinema. The last two Metal Gear Solid titles released in 2008 and 2015 respectively, only doubling down on everything was seen from the series so far. With the universe and legacy of Metal Gear now eternally part of entertainment history in its own right, it truly can be said that Kojima has paid homage to the world of film in the most valuable way possible, by evolving beyond it. Games have come a long way to complement and stand alongside the films that breathed life into them all those years ago. Where I feel Metal Gear excels lies in what it then went on to create for itself, playing a massive role in the creation of a whole new kind of hybrid experience that took awesome technical achievements in creating fun gameplay and married it to a love for the craft of dramatic storytelling made immortal in film. The mind-bending epilogue of MGS2 ends with a strong message of living, creating an experience and then choosing to pass on the best parts of yourself to the generations that come after you. And I truly feel that this is what Metal Gear achieved in inspiring millions of gamers to appreciate the works of art around them, daring to push the medium they love forward and see if they can't create something new and exciting in the process. A love of film gave birth to the Metal Gear series and that same love and passion for storytelling led to something greater than the sum of its parts. You sure know a lot about movies. I don't suppose you're the movie watching type, are you? Not really. Okay, then I'll tell you everything I know. When the going gets tough, movies can save your life. It's always good to be able to look at things from a different perspective when you get in a jam. That's the magic of movies. No kidding. Well, I guess it might at least make a nice distraction. That's the spirit, Snake. Have a little fun. 